Hey everyone, welcome to Bedtime Stories. Uh, we're going to read two books tonight. Our first book is Wolf, Wolf. The hungry old wolf was too slow to snatch birds and too stiff to chase rabbits, so he tried growing food in a small garden. Bah! Weeds everywhere! There are so many I can't even find the vegetables, the old wolf growled, rubbing his empty stomach. As he yanked in the lines from where his carrots should have been, his ears began to twitch. Wolf! Wolf! The old wolf fumbled with his hearing aid. Who's calling me? I don't remember having any friends on this mountain. In fact, the old wolf didn't have any friends on any mountain. Maybe they have some food to share. A mere morsel would do, he said. His bones creaked and his joints, crack, joints cracked as he slowly made his way toward the voice. After a tiring climb and two stubbed toes, the old wolf came to a clearing. What's this, a boy with goats? The old wolf drooled with excitement. Surely he can spare one for a hungry wolf. Before he could step into the meadow, a group of villagers came clambering up the hillside. The old wolf stayed hidden behind the bamboo as the villagers surrounded the boy. Where's the wolf? The villager cried out, waving a stick. Did he take any goats? Another gasped. What wolf? The boy giggled. There's no wolf. We ran up this hill for nothing, Veldus wheezed. Call us only if you see a wolf, scolded another. The old wolf wasn't fond of angry villagers, especially ones with sticks. So he limped down to a nearby stream. Kids, <laughs> always playing tricks on old fo folks and old wolves. He groaned as he soaked his tired feet. Before long, the boy's cry came again. Wolf, wolf, the wolf is taking the goats. Another wolf is taking those tasty goats? The old wolf couldn't stand the thought and quickly hobbled back to the meadow. The villagers were already there, huffing and puffing for running up the hill. Where is the wolf? Are the goats okay? The villagers gasped. What wolf? The boy laughed. From behind a tree, the old wolf watched the villagers stagger back down the hill. There's got to be a way to get one of those scrumptious goats from that trickster, he thought. Perhaps through a trick of my own. The old wolf sat down to work out a plan and was soon snoring away and dreaming of mooshu goat and double goat dumplings. Wolf! Wolf! The boy yelled out again. Ugh! I can't even enjoy the goats in my dreams! That boy is worse than weeds! The old wolf growled. He stretched his aching legs and went to the meadow once more. Perfect! Not a villager in sight. The old wolf slowly crept out toward the boy. The goats swiftly scattered to the far edge of the meadow. Were you calling me over for lunch? The old wolf grinned. Wolf, wolf, there is a wolf, the boy cried as he scrambled up a tree. Quit your yelling, said the wolf. Those villagers won't believe you anyway. But this time it's true, they have to believe me. You're a real wolf and you're going to take the goats. The old wolf knew his legs were too tired to chase down goats. He carefully lowered himself onto a nearby rock and gazed up at the boy. His lips curled in a smile. Villagers are only going to believe you if you really are missing a goat. I can help you with that, he grinned. Just one goat, the boy leaned forward on the branch. I'm a picky eater. That plump one looks about right, but you have to bring it to me. Because if I go over there, I might change my mind and grab them all. Bring it to you, the boy asked. On the other side of the mountain, the old wolf said, you'll find a small garden. Just tie it to the fence post there. And he started home. 
The next morning, the old wolf was overjoyed to see the plump goat nibbling away in his garden. Good fortune at last, he said. Today, I'll feast like an old wolf should. He rubbed his paws together. The wolf's mouth watered and his stomach rumbled as he crept up behind the goat. Suddenly, he noticed something remarkable. Everywhere he looked, there were ripe and juicy vegetables, baby bok choy, beautiful eggplant, ready to pick carrots, and even his favorite, onions. The old wolf couldn't believe his eyes. Then he saw the goat happily eating the last few weeds. She saw him too and froze in fear. You ate my weeds, the old wolf said. But why didn't you eat the vegetables? Sorry, I am a picky eater, she said. Please don't eat me. The wolf looked at the plump goat and then at all the juicy vegetables and back at the goat again. He sighed. Don't be sorry. You did my work for me. What's one breakfast compared to delicious vegetables for the rest of my days? The wolf smiled as he untied the goat. I could use a friend like you. Plus, double goat dumplings are overrated anyway. The end. And our last book is Natsumi. For a small girl, Natsumi did everything in a big way. She jumped high, played hard, and slurped noodles like a sumo wrestler, but not so fast, Natsumi, scolded grandmother when they went to the park. Not so hard, Natsumi, warned father when she practiced her ninja moves. Not so loud, Natsumi, called mother every time her daughter shut a door. Only grandfather smiled and said nothing. Each year, Natsumi's village had a festival of traditional Japanese arts, and her family spent weeks practicing for it. Natsumi wanted to try everything. First, she gathered flowers with grandmother, who carefully selected each bloom. Natsumi picked everything. Let's shake out any bugs, said grandmother. Tap, tap, tap. She gently wrapped the stems against her cupped palm, like this. Slap, slap, slap. Natsumi whipped her bouquet into a cloud of pollen, leaves, and ants. Not so fast, na na Natsumi, sneezed grandmother. In the afternoon, father asked, would you like to help me with the tea ceremony? Yes, Natsumi cried, popping down behind, beside him. Father measured and measured powdered tea into a bowl, poured hot water, and carefully whisked the mixture into froth, the color of spring grass. Then he added tea and water to the second bowl and handed Natsumi the whisk. She stirred, she beat, she whirled her tea into a cyclone. Father wiped green flecks from his glasses. Not so hard, Natsumi, he said. Later, Natsumi joined mother at dance rehearsal. Girls and women dipped and turned, flicking and opening, uh, flicking fans open and shut like butterflies. Natsumi flicked her fan open. Then shut, open, whist, shut, click. The harder she flicked, the louder it snapped. Whist, click, whist, click. She was a samurai leading troops to battle with her mighty war fan. Natsumi flung her arms wide. Yeah. Launched like a rocket, the fan twirled across the room and bounced off Mrs. Tanaka's knee. Uh, sorry, called Natsumi. Not so loud, Natsumi, whispered mother. That evening, grandfather found her slumped outside. Come, walk with me, Natsumi-chan, said grandfather. No matter what I do, something always goes wrong, said Natsumi. I'm sure you'll find the right fit if you keep looking and listening, replied Grandfather. They strolled toward the village hall. Natsumi heard a sound like muffled thunder. Boom, 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 boom. The very air seemed to quiver. Come on, Grandfather, Natsumi urged.
For the next two weeks, Grandfather met Natsumi after school every day and brought her home late each afternoon. When Mother asked what, where they had been, Natsumi replied, It's a surprise. On festival day, Grandmother's flowers brightened the stage, Father served tea to the mayor, and Mother danced. When the rest of the family sat down for the closing ceremony, Grandfather Natsumi disappeared into the crowd. Thank you for joining our celebration, said the mayor. Now we have one final performance, the beginning of a new tradition for our village, our own Taiko drummers. Boom! Drum beats shook the eaves. Boom! Grandmother felt her sandals vibrate. Boom! 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 Look, Father pointed the smallest drummer on the stage. Natsumi! Boom! 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 With each beat, Natsumi's stick flew faster. With each boom, she pounded harder. And one day, Natsumi hoped to be the loudest drummer of them all. The end. Thank you for reading with me.